Hello, and welcome to another Print Lab tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about preparing your files for vinyl. Now, if this is your first time making vinyl, this video is made for you. Now, if you made vinyl before and you just need a refresher, go ahead and skip to this time index in the video. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into preparing your file for vinyl. When you're preparing a file for vinyl, there are a few things to consider when creating it. First, you'll need an Adobe Illustrator file. That's the one with the .ai extension. Next thing to consider is the cutting area. On the Labs Vinyl Cutter, the cutting area is 13 inches on a roll. And for best results, we ask that you make your layout or your sections no longer than 4 feet. If you do need larger than 4 feet by 13 inches, we'll need to break up your layout and cut it by sections. You'll also want to consider which font to use. When choosing a font for cutting in vinyl, it's important to note that not all fonts are created equal. I know. Shocking! Some things to think about when choosing a font for vinyl are font size, serif or sans serif, and weeding. In fact, all these features are directly related to weeding. Now, weeding is the process of removing the unused vinyl that comes from the negative space of your design. If your font size is too small, you'll have a tough time trying to keep your letters down while weeding, especially with lowercase i's and j's. Also, if you choose a font that has very fine serifs, you may run into a similar problem. And if you choose the combo matchup of death, <laughs> tiny fonts with fine serifs, my most humble and sincere condolences to you. <laughs> Instead, try to choose a font that has a healthy weight to it and to the serifs as well. A larger font size will also help with the weeding process. If you need a small font size, then consider using a sans serif font. Now, with all that said, let's talk about how to use Illustrator to create your file for vinyl. I'm here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to click on this Create New button. And if you don't see any options over here, just go ahead and click on any of these, doesn't matter. Just as long as you get options here. I'm going to switch points to inches. I'm going to create an artboard. Now for vinyl, the artboard technically does not matter. The machine doesn't see the artboard. But I'm going to use the artboard as kind of like a visual guide to keep my artwork within the cutting area, the 13 inches. So I'm going to set my height to 13. And then for my width, I'm just going to say 24. And again, these numbers don't really matter. The machine doesn't see this. Um, it's just kind of a, a visual guide for me as I'm designing my vinyl. Okay, I'm going to hit Create. And if you're not familiar with Illustrator, this white area is the artboard. And normally, if you're designing an Illustrator, what goes on here is what matters, and then you can do brainstorming and sketching and stuff on the outside. Um, but your real design would go on the artboard. For vinyl, that doesn't really matter, so you'll actually see me go off the artboard. Um, I'm just kind of using this 13 inches as a guide. Okay, so to start, we want to type. So we use the type tool. And what a lot of people will be tempted to do is click and drag and create a text box and then you can type inside of it. It's actually easier if you don't do that. So I'm gonna undo that. And I'm just gonna click once, which will give me just one line. And if I keep typing, that line will just keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is actually to create your different lines individually. So I'm gonna start with like my top line, which would be, say, my title. Um, come up with a title photographic title I know original and I'm switching to this black arrow here so that I get the bounding box and I can grab the bounding box hold down shift so that it doesn't warp if I don't hold down shift then it it can kind of squish the text like that I don't want that to happen so if I hold down shift as I do that it'll constrain the text Okay, so now I have my title, and let's switch this to all caps, because that'll make it easy. Uh, if I go to Window, 
I can go to type and I can go to character. And I don't have all my options here. So if I click on this little, these little arrows here, it'll expand it and I can say all caps. Okay, so I've got my title. I'm not worried about font just yet. I want to get all my pieces laid out um, and then sized accordingly to each other. Not the actual size um, that I want to cut. Uh, we'll do that last. But um, in proportion to each other. So like my title versus my subtitle. Um, so photographic title. And then I'm going to create another line. So the text tool. Click once. I'll say photography by Carlos Sanchez okay, and this one I don't want to be all caps so I'll turn that off again hold shift and expand so let's say there's my subtitle okay. so I would get these laid out and notice that I'm not I'm going off of the artboard Okay, I don't really care about the artboard or being within the artboard. I just want to make sure that at least one of my dimensions is within that 13 inches. Okay. And so I'd line these up with each other and size them according to, accordingly. So if I wanted this one to be the same size or if I wanted it to be a bit smaller, I would decide that now. And then once I have it all laid out, then I would decide the overall size, like the actual dimension of it. Okay. And let me choose a font now. Um, and I can do that right here in this character panel. So I'm going to let's pick a nice chunky font. don't know what to pick you know Helvetica is a pretty decent one especially if you do Helvetica with like a bold okay you can pick whatever font you want I'm just gonna pick that one for now and we'll do that down here as well so Helvetica bold Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go with that. Um, the next important thing to do after you've chosen your font, you've laid it out, is to outline your text. Now before you do this step, you really, really need to do spell check, okay? Um, after you do this, the text will no longer be editable. Um, it'll just be shapes and you won't be able to change the text. So make sure you do spell check um, if you highlight all your text, again, I'm on the black arrow, so if I click and drag, I can highlight all my text lines, and I can go to edit and check spelling, and I don't have any errors, so I can hit done. Okay. Now, they're not lined up perfectly. What I'm going to do is outline my text, and that doesn't mean add a stroke um, so that it looks like this. This is not what we want, okay, because this, this is still um, a font. I need to change it from a font into a shape. So when I say create outlines, what I mean is um, select your text, go to type up here in the menu, and you're going to come down to create outlines. Okay, and it's no longer a text. I can't go to the text tool, and you'll notice I don't get that text cursor anymore. I can't, I can't click on it to edit the text. Okay. These are now shapes. If I go into wireframe mode, if I hit command Y, it now looks like this. Before, if I had text, let me size this up so we can see it. Okay, so a font will still show up black under the wireframe mode, and the vinyl cutter will not see this. It'll only see this line underneath, and it'll cut just this line instead of the font. Okay, so we need to outline the text so that they're individual shapes like these are. Okay, so let's get out of wireframe mode, command Y. Uh, now that I have them um, outlined, another reason for outlining is getting um, the correct size. So if I step back here a couple times before I outlined, um, if you notice, look at the bounding box on this. The bounding box is including this space underneath 
And that's because this font has lowercase j's and g's that dip down here. And so the bounding box accounts for that. Um, and so when you go for, when, when you're trying to figure out the size that you're trying to cut, um, this can throw that dimension off. Okay, because it's including this space in the size. Um, if you look up here, um, it's uh, 3.755 inches high um, right here, but that's including this empty space. If I then outline the text, type, create outlines, you'll notice that that dimension changes. This is actually only 2.133 inches tall. Okay, so let me outline this one as well. Create outlines. Okay, now that they're outlined, I have an accurate representation of the size. Um, this is 31 inches wide, which is within our four feet uh, regulation. So I would be good with that. I'm just gonna round these off. Um, I can actually type in this little window up here where it says properties, I can actually type the dimensions. Make sure it's linked so that you're not stretching or squishing the, the font. Um, these will change together. Let's say I wanted my uh, letters to be exactly three inches tall. If I did that, that would give me 43 inches. So I'm still within the four feet, um, but that would be 43 inches wide. Um, I can then think, well, maybe I don't want it to be that wide. Maybe I just want it to be a two foot title. So if I go to 24 inches, um, that would give me about one and a half inch title, which is kind of small, um, but you get the point. Okay, so I'll, I'll go back. Let's do the three inch letters. Um, and then these will make two inches tall. Um, let's actually go one and a half. So 1.5. That looks better. Okay, now if you want these, you do need to lay this out the way you want it on the wall. That would make it easier for you. Um, you could cut them separately and just line them up yourself. But to help yourself, if you can get them lined up on the vinyl, then you can just put the transfer tape on and throw it up on the wall. You don't have to line it up. Okay. Um, so to get these perfectly aligned, I'm going to use the Align tool. And if I select both of these, um, in the Properties panel, the Align tool turns on. And with both of them selected, if I, sel if I click on the title again, you'll notice that it gets this uh, highlight on the top. And what that's telling Illustrator is align the objects to this object. So it's going to align this one to this one. And I'm just going to hit this Horizontal Align Center. That's just going to push this over and I can, you know, move this up and down um, as I need to, if I needed to space it, I think it looks pretty good right there. Um, and so I'm ready to send this in to get cut. Okay. So if we go to command Y, there's my thing. Um, my artboard doesn't fit, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried that it fits within this 13 inches. And so if I cut it lengthwise up the roll of vinyl, um, it'll fit within the 13 inches and it's 43 inches wide, um, which fits within the four feet and I can send it. So all I would need to do, I don't have to resize the artboard or anything like that. I just need to do file, save as, I'm going to save it to the desktop. I'm going to say Carlos final dot AI, we need the Illustrator file, so I'm just going to leave it at Adobe Illustrator, and I'm going to hit Save. I'm going to click OK. I'm just going to leave those at default. I can now close Adobe Illustrator. I now have my Carlos Vinyl. I'm going to take that and drop that into the print station. And that is how you prepare files for vinyl.